We are live, live, live. Hello, hello, everyone. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. I am excited to be here on this Saturday morning. Welcome to Ball Life Magazine, Living a Ball Life. That's what we're here to talk about, living a bald life. Come on in the room. Please, as you drop in, share this video out because we want to get as many people as possible on this live interview. We want to share some information, bring some awareness and empowerment on today. It is, it is Alopecia Awareness Month, so we're going to be talking about a lot of things on today. But again, welcome to Bald Life Magazine, Living a Bald Life. Bald Life Magazine is a platform for men, women, and children that are dealing with hair loss due to alopecia, cancer, medically induced, or simply by choice. This platform is for them. This platform is for them to share their stories to stand in their truth and to unapologetically rock their crown. How about that? That just sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. They can rock their crown. I believe this, okay? I believe that this is the first platform out there. I know that this is the first magazine that features only bald people. Mm -hmm. Bald people from all over the world. We have released our first article, excuse me, article, our first magazine, September 1st, 2020. We'll talk about that more at the end of the show, but I want to encourage you guys to go to our website and to uh, purchase a copy. Be part of history. Purchase a copy for uh, a gift for somebody that you may know that may be dealing with hair loss. Actually, the magazine is so powerful that we have articles that um, can be applied to anybody. You don't have to have hair loss to enjoy the content that's within our magazine. But I can say this, that anybody that is dealing with hair loss, they will be encouraged and they will be empowered from our magazine. And I'm just, I'm just excited today, but let me give you guys a little context little background information on what we're going to be talking about on today. So alopecia, what is alopecia? Alopecia is a autoimmune disease. It's where your immune system attacks your hair follicle and causes your hair to fall out. Now there are 6.8 million people in the U.S., 147 million people worldwide that have this disease. Now, I really don't like to call it a disease because it's not contagious. You're not gonna catch anything or catch it by standing next to us or someone who has alopecia. Alopecia does not discriminate, meaning that it can happen to anybody at any time, any age, any gender, it doesn't matter. Alopecia actually is rude, okay? It just shows up. It doesn't say, excuse me. It doesn't say, pardon me. It's like a thief in the night. It just sneaks Absolutely. in on you unexpectedly. You don't even know. You don't even have, don't know how. And you don't even know why. It's just one of those diseases that will take, well, that will grab your immune system. Your immune system won't know what's going on. And next thing you know, you've lost your hair. You can lose... Um, all your body hair, we have alopecia areata, where you start with just bald spots throughout your head. You have alopecia totalis, where you just pretty much lose the hair on your head. And then you have alopecia universalis. That's total body hair. And I'm knocking on the door of that right now. Can you imagine losing your eyelashes, your nose hairs, all the body, on, all the hair on your body? That right there, that's a cold piece. Let me tell you, because sometimes I don't even know that my nose is running. You know, it just starts running because I don't have any uh, protection. No nose hairs to, to protect me. You know, it just starts running. So if y'all see me grab some Kleenex today, you know what it is. It's just the alopecia doing this thing, okay? But I just want to give you guys a little context 
around the topic of what we're going to be talking about. And I have the honor of having my beautiful sister. She is an amazing woman. I love everything about her. I love everything that she stands for. She has a heart of gold. She loves helping people. And she brings so much joy to me. Out of nowhere, she will send me a text that will have me cracking up laughing. She's an undercover comedian. I don't think you guys knew that. <laughs> she's an undercover comedian. And she's just lovely. She's absolutely <laughs> lovely. So I just want to say good morning and hello. How are you doing today, sis? Good morning, sis. I am doing wonderful. How are you? I am doing well. I want you to let us see that that nice t-shirt you have on. What does your t-shirt say? Um, instead bald of but no. Yes. Instead of Chick-fil-A, it says bald fillet. Yes. Yes. You yes. got a bald fillet over so here, boo. Can... That's what I'm talking about. So they can um, reach out to you to get to get to purchase a t-shirt. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They can do that. Just uh, what, what other t-shirts do you have? Um, it's this one. I have some that says baldish. I have uh, oh, t-shirts that says um, straight out of hair, like straight out of Compton, but straight out of hair. Come on, somebody! I want that one too. Yeah. <laughs> It. It's 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 so many, it. and then I also have one that says it's not cancer, it's not a statement, it's alopecia. Because when people see you rocking a the ball, they automatically think you're a cancer patient, you know. So I have to let everybody know it's wow. it's alopecia. Yes, yes. I want to encourage all of our our viewers um, that if you're interested in purchasing a t-shirt, please drop your name in the comments section or reach out to Monique directly. Send her a message and let her know that you're interested in a t-shirt. Can you imagine I was walking around rocking those t-shirts? That would be hot. Absolutely hot mm -hmm. and fire. But sis, I want to jump in yeah. and I want to talk. Okay. I want to talk, talk about your journey. Your journey with with um alopecia and hair loss. So tell us, mm -hmm. when did you first notice that you were losing your hair or your hair was thinning? Talk to us about that and give us a, a a visual picture of what was going on in your life during that time. Okay, um, I first started noticing thinning of my hair at the age of fifteen years old. I was a sophomore in high school. And at that time, you know, I didn't think anything of it. Um, my mom's good friend was a hairstylist and he said, hey, do you have you noticed your hair was thinning? And I told him, yeah, but I didn't think anything of it. And at that time, he said, well, baby, you need to go to the doctor. I didn't, you know, being black in a black mm. community, we don't think about going to see any doctors, dermatologists or anything which we should, you know, um, but I just left it alone and would always cover it up with, um, back then the big popular ponytails is coming back. They were in then. So I would always cover it up with that. But later on, let's skip, mm -hmm. um, 10 years forward. Um, I was married and I noticed nope. then I started getting ball spots. And then that's when I decided to go to my doctor and she sent me to a dermatologist. He told me, he, he asked me what kind of hairstyles that I wear growing up. I told him, you know, ponytails, you know, braids and stuff like that. And he said, what it looks like is traction alopecia. I had no clue what alopecia was then. So I'm like, okay, well, let me go ahead. Let me get a mm. second opinion. So I went to another doctor. This Mark. time... She did mm. a uh, biopsy of my scalp. She took like, she had to basically numb my scalp and cut like five layers of skin out. And maybe like a week later, she called me back and she said, yeah, you have uh, what we call traction alopecia. And because of the, the pulling and the tugging of the different hairstyles you've had, 
your hair is just going to continually to to go away. And I it took me forever to just accept it and I hid it for years. Mm. You you said a couple of things and I think mm -hmm. A lot of us in the African American community don't understand um, how important it is to number one listen to our body, right? To pay attention to the changes and things that are going on with our body, and then two, right. to be uh, more sensitive and make better choices when it comes to styling. Because I'm a hairstylist, and I know what that traction, the braiding, the French braiding, putting our girl, our little girls, our daughters' hairs, and and ponytails, and we pulling it all extra tight, slicking it down and putting the rubber bands. Right. But we don't realize that sometimes right. that can cause hair loss around the yes. edges, especially. So I think yes. that, that, that's important. That's very important. important. So thank you for, for bringing important. that up. You're welcome. Sis, now let me ask you, is there anybody else in your family that is dealing with um, alopecia or hair loss? Um, from what I know, I, I think I have a cousin with it and she's not quite comfortable with sharing it yet, which is fine. And I won't mention her name. Uh, and I, uh, her mm -hmm. mom as well. But beforehand, I had no idea, you know, I'm asking, and that's why it's very important to know your family, the roots, the background of your family. And it's very important to tell your kids anything I know in the black community, we tend to sleep, uh, sweep a lot of things up under the rug and we don't like to share different things. But if you're dealing with any type of sickness in your body, I don't care if it's high blood pressure, if there's anything as small as acne, tell them so your kids, kids, kids will know, you know. But um, I was the first to find out in my family that mm. I had alopecia or whatever, because like even when I went to the doctor, they did so many different tests because it was signs of lupus. It was signs of rheumatoid arthritis. They they did everything else first before they told me I had alopecia. So in the black community, please don't sweep anything up under the rug. Let your family know what's going on with you. That way, if you pass away, no one will be lost in the future. Girl, let's see. Now, you didn't just uncovered and unpacked a whole lot of stuff that we can definitely mm -hmm. talk about. And I think, just like you said, I will agree. We have to talk about what's going on in our family lineage. Absolutely. You know, um, we can avoid, we can um, avoid a lot of sicknesses um, right. and unnecessary ailments if we just talk and not keep Absolutely. everything a secret. So I think that is, Absolutely. that is so, so important. You know, I want to kind of backtrack a little bit. You said that you noticed your hair was falling out at the age of 15 years old. So you were in high school. What was it like for you? I mean, what did you do to hide um, your hair loss? Were you wearing wigs? I mean, did you experience any bullying? Talk to us and tell us what it was like in high school to deal with this condition. Okay. Um, what really... When it really got to me, I remember being um, a, a cheerleader on the, the football field. And the captain of the cheerleading, she said, she looked and she said, you can see through your bangs. You know that, right? And I just played it off. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I say, uh, my hair just thinning. I say, it, it thins and it grows back, which at that time it did, you know? So I didn't think anything of it, but I had so much hair in high school that if I could, if I wore a certain style, you couldn't tell at all. Because here, here I am, a black kid growing up with a head full of fiery red hair. So I had ways of covering it, covering mm -hmm. the, the the spots up. You know, I can put it up in a ponytail; no one would know. You know, so it it was ways, but I was never bullied in high school uh, because of the hair loss because I, I hid it. Wow. So you went yeah. through high school, you got married. And I, mm -hmm. I wanna I wanna sit there for a minute because I know that a lot of people, a lot of women that I talk to that's dealing with um alopecia, 
one of their biggest fears is relationships, dating, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. asking will somebody accept them um, right. because of their alopecia. And then the biggest challenge that I've noticed with women with alopecia is they don't know how to disclose to their husband that they have alopecia. Because I didn't been there. I dated a guy for six months and he didn't know mm-hmm. nothing. He didn't see right. it or he didn't, you know, wasn't, he wasn't aware what was going on. So let me ask you, during your dating years <laughs> and when you got married, did you ever tell your husband? And if you did, what was that like? And what was his response? Okay. Well, uh, when I was married, um, that's, he, he's the one too, you know, that told me, Hey, go ahead and go to the doctor to see what's going on or whatever, because he knew I had a head full of hair. You know, and when I finally told him, he told me, oh, don't worry about it. But the thing is, here's the thing. When you tell people your deepest secrets and people know that you're insecurity, people Mm. will use it against you. So there was a time, of course, when we separated, going through a divorce or whatever. He used that against me and I, I hated him, you know, and I know hate is a strong word, but to to use that against me. And that's my deepest secrets like my family didn't even know. You know, so, but as far as um, Mm. me dating, um, it was this one guy. Well, I'm going to give you a couple examples. Uh, One guy, he was like, I just feel like you're keeping something from me. He was like, what, what, why don't you wear your real hair? And I would just tell him, oh, it's thin. It's thin. I don't want to deal with this long, but it's thin. Finally, he was like, I just feel like he was just. Come to find out, basically, he was a narcissist. So he's the type of guy that will take something, your biggest secrets, and use it against you. So when I finally told him, look, because I got tired of him asking, look, I have alopecia. I suffer from that. So he was like, what is it? So I pulled up pictures on the Internet so he could see. Yeah, if I could slap him, I would have. He, oh, my God, your hair looks like that. You bald head like that up under there. Oh, my God. Oh, no, I don't think I could be with anyone like you. Baby. Oh my See, God. I know me and I, I know my mouth, my words cut deep. I could have cut him just like that and he would have felt <laughs> like below dirt. But I chose not to. Yes. And then there was another guy that, you know, of course, they see me and say, oh, yeah, she's pretty. But when they realize, oh, I don't have hair, one guy told me, oh my God, uh, say, I usually date girls with long hair. And then he say, I really don't like girls with short hair, but for you to not have any hair, this is going to be something for me to get used to. I say, baby, don't worry about it. You ain't got to get used to it because this is our first and last date, boo. Men and people could be so cold. I know that's right. They could be so shallow. It's, it's crazy, but now I've learned to love me. And love who God created me to be. And I'm going to rock mm-hmm. this ball. You can either get on board or you can go on about your business. I, I don't care. So it is what it is. I, I tell people all the time, I like, I'm single now. I know that's right. And, and if the good Lord was to take me right now without having somebody in my life, I'm good. I'm good. I'm whole as just me by myself. I don't need any man to validate me. I know that's right, sis. Come on. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of women, we as alopecians, mm-hmm. we need to realize that we're beautiful. Absolutely. Um, we have to accept ourselves the way that we are, if or without mm-hmm. a man, because a man doesn't make mm-hmm. us. They don't. And I, I, I think that if we if we can get the confidence that we need. We wouldn't even worry about a relationship. If he's going to show up, he's going to show up. Period. Absolutely. And I, I believe that we draw the type of person, certain type of people in our, into our lives anyway. So if you're negative and you got low self-esteem, you're going to draw that type of person into your life. Just and that's period. Exactly. That energy, you're going to pull that type of energy. So I say to, <laughs> I say to every t- all the all women with alopecia, just focus on yourself. Get healed. Get whole. Mm-hmm. And he'll yeah. show up. He'll show up if he's supposed to. And if he don't, we yeah. just rock our crowns, right? 
Rock it on. We rock our crowns. So let me ask you. Okay, so you you got diagnosed at 15, you got married. Um it sounded like you wore you wore wigs for a while. Did you wear wigs and weaves for a while? It was weave. I, I never wore a wig because I was always afraid that it was going to slip off. So I always wore a quick weave. Like I said, I had enough hair, still had enough hair to be able to wrap around the ball, you know, because my hair was to the middle of my back. Mm. So I still had enough hair mm. to wrap around. So I would always wear a quick weave. Every two weeks, I was a different person. I'd be blonde, red, black, blue. Purple. Okay. Every two weeks, it was a different person. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Even after every hairstyle yeah. I had, I still felt so ugly inside. I did not feel beautiful mm. and whole until mm. I I just did the big chop. Until you shaved it off. Yeah. Yeah. What made you decide? What was the decision factor that made you say, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm tired of going to the hairstylist every two weeks. I'm tired of spending all my money. I'm tired of all the stares and the looks and the comments and whatever else you were dealing with. What made you decide to shave the rest of your hair off? I want to talk about that. Okay. So, um, what made me decide? Okay. I was going to the salon and it's like, no matter what hairstyle I got, I was never satisfied. And then my stylist at the time, mm -hmm. you know, we had been friends for years since I was 15 and she was 14. And it just seemed like to me, she started getting kind of snappy with me. And like, she'll say little slick stuff like, hmm. if you don't know what you want, uh, I'm not gonna do your hair no more because you, you never know what you want. I'm like, but you're the stylist. You know, I have, because I, I can't, anybody that knows me knows that I had a whole beauty supply of hair in my trunk from curly, straight, short, whatever. So I'm like, I got all this hair. Think of something because I was getting the same styles over and over. And it was this one style mm. that I got two weeks prior to cutting my hair off. When I came home, it's like I, I just cried because I'm like, this is ugly. And if I have to come home mm. and re put tracks in my head to make it full and make it look like something, I was sick of it. So that next day, it was, I, I, I would get my hair done on Thursdays. So that Saturday, me and my daughter, we were riding in the car. And she was on Pinterest and she said, mama, why don't you get your hair like this? You've had every hairstyle except this. So I'm like, okay, hold on, baby. Let me stop. You know, wait till I get to a red light. I get to the red light and she showed me the picture and it's a bald woman. She said, you can rock anything. I mm. think you'll be pretty. And I'm like stunned. Right. I said, you think I'll be pretty because see, I've always taught her. If you see a bald person, kid, man, woman, kid or whatever or a cripple or whatever, they're not, they're no different than you. We all have flaws. Some you can see and some you can't. So don't treat anyone any differently. You love everybody. So I've always instilled that in her. So when I got home, I was sitting in my room. Mm. That's okay, hon. Mm. I'm sorry. And I was crying. That's okay. That's okay. Mm. And at the time she was eight. And she said, Mama, what's wrong? And I told her, I said, Well, mommy got a secret to tell you. And she said, Well, what is it? I said, Well, you know how I tell you to love everybody or whatever. I said, uh, well, mommy don't have any hair. I say, I have. 
a scalp condition called alopecia where it eats the hair away. And she wiped my face and she said, well, mommy, don't cry. And she was like, have you prayed to God and asked him to bring your hair back? And I said, yeah. She was like, well, just keep praying. You got to keep believing that he'll bring your hair back. But she said, but guess what? If he don't bring your hair back, mommy. She said, if nobody love you, just know that me and God will always love you. And that right then and there, I said, you know, God spoke through my child to me because, see, I had my own plan, but God had other plans. I had the plan to chop my hair off at 40 and do this extravagant 40, uh, 40th photo shoot, but God had other plans. And I was 38 when I decided to chop my hair off. And when I chopped my hair off, when she finally did see me, because she was gone for the weekend, but when she finally did see me, she, her eyes and her face lit up and she told her aunt, she was like, look at my mommy. Isn't she the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life? So oh. after that, you know, she I was have right. to, yeah, we have to teach our daughters that it's okay that hair does not make you at all. You know, so and like ever mm. since then, I've been so free, you know, ever since that day. And it's, it's crazy because I can be out and wonder why people are staring at me. And my daughter, you say I'm a comedian. She's a comedian. She's like, Mama, did you see he almost hit that car looking at you or whatever? You know, but <laughs> it's just we have to teach our daughters that it's OK, <laughs> you know, I forget sometimes that I have a bald head because I'm right. so comfortable in my skin. You know. Yes. Mm. Girl, you you have said so much because I think we as parents, it's important to do what you did. To teach right. our kids how to love and accept people regardless of what they look like. We right. have to, because we never know what somebody's going through. We never right. know. And you are raising uh, an amazing little girl. She's so sweet and talented. And I just love her. And I love you. I mean, my God. I love you. Girl. <laughs> girl. Yeah. That was a game changer right there. When baby girls say, yeah. come on, mama. You can do this. You right. can do this. Absolutely. Oh, I Absolutely. love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, sis, if mm -hmm. you if you ran into somebody or somebody is watching us right now, another young lady or a mother, and they're dealing with alopecia, what words of encouragement would you say to them or share with them on their alopecia journey? Can you talk to that person who just got diagnosed? Um. I would tell her to love herself, love who God, who God created her to be. You know, you're not alone in this. Like I did, I thought I was alone, but I was not alone. Um, you're going to think people are going to stare at you or whatever, but they're not staring at you because you're bald. They're staring at you because they're, they, they, they see strength in you and courage and a boldness. They yes. see that in you. So, Love yourself because we were, look, God knew before we were e even created in our mom's womb what we were going to be. Come on now. So this is, mm -hmm. you know, just accept, mm -hmm. accept who God created you to be, period, point blank. I know it's hard. It's, it's hard to just think it. But once you go through it and you accept it, you'll feel so much better. It'll feel like the world has been lifted off your shoulders. Yes. Yes. That is so amazing. You know, I just thought of something just off the cuff and I want you to roll mm -hmm. with me on this. I'm going to call this. Um, let's speak words of life to a woman with alopecia and we're just going to um, shout it out. So I'm going to say a word and think of words that will bring um, someone's strength or an encouragement. And let's just let's just shout it out. And the people that are on 
are live right now, I want you guys to drop words of encouragement in the comment section as T and I are speaking these words. So the first word that I think of, of somebody with alopecia is strength. What's your word, sweetie? Brave. Bold. Courage. Beautiful. Fierce. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Diva, ball diva. Yes. Unique. Fabulous. Let me see. Nobody like you. Goddess. Mm. Queen. Mm. <laughs> Look, you, you got me. Look, you got me. You got me. <laughs> That's okay. That was fun, huh? That was fun. Yeah. I love it. That was fun. And everybody else is participating. They're dropping comments. I see resilient. I see self-love. Yes. Oh, I see fierce, yes. free, yes. made by yes. God's design, royalty. Absolutely. Mm. Yes. 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 That's what I, that's what it's all about. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Now, sis, I know mm -hmm. that you do a lot of work. Uh, wrapped around um, alopecia and awareness. Can you talk to us about your organization and your group and what you do and why you decide to start um, your organization? And tell us the title of it as well, your group. I have a, a group on Facebook. Uh, it's called Baldly Made Beauty. And it's for all of the bald mm. women, men, children, uh, anybody that's bald. You know, I, I try to drop things on that page and in the group to encourage people, you know, that it's OK to rock your ball. Because I know with me before I started the group, before I even hit like on an alopecia group on Facebook or any other social media websites, I was afraid to even hit like because I, I felt like people would figure it out that I had alopecia because, you know, you hear all the whispers, even when I lost my hair, I'm sorry, even when I did the big chop, I, I got, you wouldn't believe how many women inboxed me and said, oh, well, such and such did tell me that you didn't have any hair under that weave, or I kind of figured you didn't have any hair up under that weave. And I'm like, okay, you're my so-called friend. So if you were comfortable sitting around them saying that you didn't take defense, it's a lot of people I had to let go. So this this page and this group is just to encourage the people who are suffering in silence that it's it's OK. It's OK. Mm. Wow. Wow. And it's so interesting. So it's like you said, sometimes it's the people that are closest to you, you know, Absolutely. that one either because I had a friend who I think she liked. She liked it when I was suffering in silence. She liked it when I didn't have any self-esteem. I think she liked it. She didn't say yeah. that, but just the way that she interacted with me. And when I came Absolutely. out, she was like, oh, I didn't know. I thought, you know, so all those little comments. It's not, it's not okay. But like you said, most people suffer in silence and they think that they're alone and they are not alone. There's millions of us. Over 147 yes. million people worldwide yeah. have this disease. Yes. I mean, come on. Yes. Yeah. Come on. We got our so own we're movement. We're not alone in this. We're not alone. We got our own movement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -mm. And um, No, we're not. No, we're not. It's crazy because I'm, I'm um, 
I've I've made so many friends during this journey. Like I met one day I met a woman and I was uh standing in Chili's waiting on a table. And she finally walked up to me and she said, Can I ask you a question? I mm. said, sure. And she's like, Do you have alopecia? And I was like, Yeah. She's like, oh my God. She was like, my two boys, she had teenage boys. And she said, they they saw you walking in and they said how beautiful you were. And they told me, Mama, go and ask her if she have alopecia as well. So she I we we swapped phone numbers and she was like, I'm gonna have the courage to cut my hair one day. Not now, but I will soon. This was last year. She just reached out to me um, last month and said, hey, sis, I'm ready. She's ready to do the big chop. She's going to mm. do a photo shoot. I hooked her up with my photographer. So she's ready. And you, you just never know how many people are watching you from afar. And I have people walking up to me in the store. Hey, you're the woman from Facebook. My aunt is suffering through alopecia and she she showed me your picture. I just want to say thank you. You just never know who you can empower. Yes, you are so right. I tell people all the time that your story is not your story. Your story right. is for somebody else. Absolutely. You never know, like you said, who's watching you, who needs to hear your story, who you can encourage. You never know. I encourage anyone that's dealing with alopecia, tell your story. It doesn't have to be yes. on this platform, but tell somebody because you never know who needs to hear your story. You can literally, you can literally save somebody's life. Absolutely. Because people because deal with depression, can, they deal with anxiety, yeah. they deal with all types of things when it comes to. Yeah. It's so, yeah. I, I, expound, he can, yeah. <laughs> I've gone yeah. through that, you know, depression stage and nobody knew I would walk into work with a smile on my face, but I had to drop that. You know, I had to put on a mask and pretend like everything was OK around friends, family or whatever. Yeah. And I would sit at home and just cry because I just felt like, oh, I'm so ugly. And why me? Why me? And God said, why not you? You are the chosen vessel. This story is, does not belong to you. You're helping mm -hmm. somebody else. So yes. you never know who you can help. Mm. And you know, it's it's I'm amazing talking. how one day I was in a grocery store and this little girl, she was a little white little girl and she was staring and her mom was like, oh, honey, it's not nice to stare. And I was like, oh, it's okay. And she was like, but mama, why is she bald or whatever? And then uh, she was like, ask her. So I explained to her what it was. She was like, but I'm I'm staring at you. She was like six. She was like, I'm staring at you because you're so pretty. You look like a real life dog. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, and, and she told her mom, she was like, can I do mine like that? You know, <laughs> like, wow. You just never know who you're watching. <laughs> <Okay. in there. laughs> yeah. So All right. And come to find out, you Girl, know, you got, she the, said you got the baby's one to cut her hair. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and her All right, come find out her teenage uh, niece was suffering alopecia too. And she was like, I'm going to tell her to go on your page to look you up. Okay, that's fine. I have women reaching out to me from all over like Jamaica, from the Bahamas. It's, it's amazing how many women are suffering with this disease. Girl, it's a trip. It's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of women, yeah. and a lot of women suffering yes. in silence. And that's the yes. part. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Yeah. They don't have to. And, and we're going to speak to those women right now and let them know that they can come out. You don't necessarily have to shave your hair like we do, like we have. Right. Because freedom right. and healing is different on everybody. If you choose to wear an right. accessory. Because we call wigs right. and weeds accessories. If you choose to wear an accessory, that's fine. Do whatever right. makes you feel comfortable. But at the end of the day, you have to be healed on the inside. You have to Absolutely. know who you are on the inside. And how you right. feel on the inside will show on the outside. That's right. what it's about. Right. That's what it's about. This, I have a segment at the end um, that I always do. 
And I know mm -hmm. you probably heard the saying before when you um, go to a funeral and you hear people say, um, you got to give people their flowers while they, while they live. And you hear people talking and crying over the casket and just talking about this person did this and what they meant, meant to them when they did and gone. Okay. Cause they can't smell the flowers when you're dead. Right. So right. I have a segment and I call it, um, who would you like to give your flowers to? And what I mean by that is there are some people that are instrumental, that were instrumental in your alopecia journey. And if you could thank them and give them their flowers, who would it be? And please share your flowers with them right now. Oh, um, my my daughter, of course. She's 10, but <laughs> in the body of a 50-year-old woman. Um, my daughter, uh, my cousin, oh my God. Um, I she's more like my sister than anything. So I call her my prima, which is cousin in Spanish. Canitria, I call her K, Prima, whatever her. Uh, my best friend, Chantrell McIntyre. Um, my other good friend, mm. sis, um, Erica Joseph, which is she's my daughter's hairstylist. Um, okay. My work family, everybody at work, pretty much. HR, everybody was on board with me. And um, my mom, my dad. That's what I'm talking about. You got to give people their, their flowers while they can smell them, you know, yes. while they can smell them. Yes. So that is um, yes. totally awesome. I um I appreciate you and I appreciate all that you do. I want to encourage everybody to inbox you, leave a message in the comment section if they want to reach out to T. Monique about alopecia. You need some support. You want to purchase a T-shirt. Yes. Reach out to her as well. And I want to let everybody know, this is our magazine. And T. Monique is featured in our magazine. Yes, she is. Let's see. I'm going to just give them a little sneak peek, just real quick. Just a little okay. bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> I can find a page. Love for you guys to purchase our magazine. She's in here two times. I don't know if y'all can see that. And she's fired up in this magazine, okay? She's fired up in this magazine. So I'm going to encourage you guys and ask you guys to help us make history. Go to our website, baldlifemagazine.com. You can purchase you a copy, and we will send it directly to you. Or if you just want a digital copy, copy you can do that as well. You have options, okay? So thank you guys so much for joining us on today. Leave a comment in the comment section. T. Monique will come back, answer any questions that you may have. And what, let's just keep it going. It's Alopecia Awareness Month. We do this um, interview every single week, every Friday. Actually, we've been doing it twice, twice a week because we have so many people that want to share their stories. You know, they want to share their stories. And so that's the whole goal, educate and empower and encourage people with, um, with hair loss, with alopecia. That's what that's what Absolutely. we do. And so we want to I want to thank you guys for joining us. And T, I want to thank you so much, sweetie, for your sweet spirit, for sharing your story, for your transparency and for just being a light in my life. I just appreciate thank you. you. I really do. I appreciate so, you, too, sis. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. We're going to say goodbye to everybody. But sis, you stay right there. We're going to say goodbye to everybody else. And remember. Go to our website and actually, I need to give out one last shout out. You guys see these beautiful earrings I'm wearing here? I like to accessorize, okay? So these earrings, um, I got them from one of my girlfriends, Raquel. Um, excuse me, Rachel. Excuse me, I always call her Raquel. She's going to hit me. Um, Rachel with Destiny Bling Box. Destiny Bling Box. If you guys need some accessories, you need some earrings, please go and support her. I just love my earrings. I'm always rocking Beautiful. somebody's earrings every time I'm on the air because I love to accessorize. Definitely, I love to accessorize. So thank you guys so much. Go to baldlivemagazine.com 
we will see you guys next week, next Friday, and next Saturday for two more interviews. So you guys have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.